Good evening, everyone. Uh, we are on our second installment of Pythagorean Tarot. Yesterday we went over the Fool. Today we are going over the history and deep meanings of the Magician, or Magus, as it is sometimes referred to. So let me just show you the photo to get yourself familiar here. The Mage, the Magician, the Magus. So let's just jump right into it. And uh, I'm having a lot of shoulder pain today, so I'm going to be looking down a lot. Um, don't take that as me not engaging. It's just holding up this book has just really irritated my shoulder issues. I know it sounds so dumb because it's such, it's like a five, three pound book at most. But yeah, over the course of a half hour or so, it really, really got to me last night. So I apologize for lack of eye contact, but uh, here we go. Hermes stands behind a three-legged table on which are a flute, a leather purse, two dice, and a tower, which is a device for tossing dice that looks like a miniature version of Tarot 15, uh, Trump Tarot 15, the tower. The dice show snake eyes. On the right sides are fours, and on the two left sides are fives. The first two fingers of his right hand are extended over the table, in his left hand, he holds a cadesis, formed of three shoots, the center forming the handle and the two outer entwined in double loops. The loop part glows bright brightly, and the ends of the outside shoots are carved with serpent heads, the left, rod, the left red, and the right green. Hermes, a mature man with a thick, moderately long beard, wears a petosus, a broad-brimmed hat of the traveler and laced leather boots almost reaching to his knees. He also wears around his shoulders a red, short mantle with a green fringe and a short white tunic, <laughs> under which he seems to have an erection. Hmm. <laughs> there are small, shiny, decorated bronze discs on his tunic and mantle, which are engraved with symbols such as the familiar astrological sign for Mercury an alpha, an omega, and an equilateral triangle inside a square. A grotesque Medusa mask with snake-like tassels for hair hangs behind Hermes on the wall to his right. A cock stands beside him to the left. That's a chicken or rooster. Here's a uh, short uh, poem from uh, ancient history. A touch of the magician's wand, a word, a sight, a sound, a gift by chance conferred. Transforms your life and leads the soul beyond. A custom bounds if only you respond. Attend the guide whenever the call is heard. Transformation is initiated by a chance occurrence. The magician, the king of Saturnalia, is chosen by lot. And during his seven-day reign, his whim is law. And other people will be made kings or beggars, winners or losers, by his caprice. He rolls his dice and others must obey. He is unpredictable and mercurial. Thus he is called the Lord of Chance. The magician is the creator of a new cosmos. He allows us a temporary entry into another world so that we may be transformed and reborn into the mundane world. Hermes is released into the world to recreate it, a recreation. And through him, the limitless vitality of the fool is given a purpose, direction, and intent. So I like how the magician and the fool are so closely related, not only in the tarot zero and ones, but also in the interpretation. So you have um, the fool was a lot uh, closely related to um, Dionysius, the uh, son of Zeus. And then you have uh, the magician here who is uh, Hermes. Hello, thanks for joining the, the discussion. However, to create a new cosmos, the old cosmos must be turned upside down. Thus, the magician Hermes is the lord of contradiction. First, he himself is a contradic contradictory figure, trickster yet saver, king of misrule yet obedient to justice, deceiving orator yet honest prophet. Illusionist, yet revealer of truth. Fraudulent conjurer, yet genuine mage. Thief, yet honest traitor. Diabolical, yet angelic. Material, yet spiritual. Second, he governs contradiction and shows the way that he, 
that finds unity in opposition. In particular, he governs the transformation of a bad situation into a good outcome. Remember that on the day of his birth, Hermes stole Apollo's cattle, tricked him, and lied about it. Yet these crimes eventured into in Apollo receiving the lyre and becoming the patron of the arts, and Hermes becoming the patron of divination and shepherds. Hermes teaches us the worst evils can be transformed into good. He provokes us into new insights. The magician is one of the four agents of transformation, the other being fortune, time, and the star. He is the psychopomp who leads souls across boundaries into new realms. He is the guide or teacher we encounter just when they're needed most, or just when we're ready to understand what they have to say. He is the one who leads us to the book that we happen to look at and buy on a whim, and which is later enormously valuable to us. He is the source of the overheard remark that leads us on a path of change. When we benefit from synchronicity, Hermes deserves our thanks. Traditionally, this trump has been called the magician, the juggler, the mountebank, and even the thimble rigger. Furthermore, in many languages, the word for magician has two senses, an authentic magician and a charlatan. Mokley identifies the magician with the little juggler Bagatino, a clown who is identified with the carnival king. Occultists may deplore this ambiguity, but it's inherent in the nature of Hermes, for he is simultaneously the magician, the trickster, the crafty one, and the thief. He is called Shifty and Skin Changing, the god of illusion and delusion. The antinomian or contradictory nature of Hermes is well documented. He is called duplex of two natures, male and female, heaven and earth, mother and father, young and old, strong and weak. As Jung says, in comparison with the purity and uni unity of the Christ symbol, Mercurius Lapis is ambigu ambiguous, <laughs> ambiguous, dark, paradoxical, and thoroughly pagan. The paracal, paradoxical nature of Mercurius reflects an important aspect of the self, the fact, namely, that it is essentially a complexio oppositorum, and indeed can be nothing else if it is to represent any kind of totality. Jung continues, the magic of his name enables him, in spite of his ambiguity and duplicity, to keep outside the split, for as an, for as an ancient pagan god, he possesses a natural undividedness which is impervious to logical and moral contradictions. This gives him invulnerability and incorruptibility, the very qualities we so urgently need to heal and split in ourselves. Further evidence for Hermes as the Carnival King is provided by the Hermea, an ancient Cretan festival in his honor in which masters and slaves traded places. The magician is called the Lord of Chance because Hermes is also the patron of the happy coincidence, the chance encounter, the unexpected find, the overheard word. The cladon, or accidentally significant utterance, is the basis for Hermes' own system of divination, in which, after prayer, one covers one's ears and, until in the marketplace, and then uncovers them and takes the first word heard as an omen. That's pretty interesting. From Apollo, he learned astra gallomancy, and divination by dice. Finally, Hermes is the god of games and chance. Jung compares him to the demonic serpent Lilith or Melusina, who lives in the tree, prods and persuade us with knowledge. Since the magician is the king of misrule, he reverses the order of nature. His every whim is law, so those subject to his Capricious orders know him as the lord of chance. Some he may make emperors, others slaves. Some he may make priests, others he marries. His capriciousness contrasts with the inevitable ascent and descent of the wheel of fortune, the lady of chance. The magician is the alch alchemical mercury 
who will unite the salt of the empress, the salt, the sulfur of the emperor. He will preside over the sacred marriage of the lunar high priestess, high priestess to the solar high priest. Oversee its consummation in love and deliver the child temperance. The magician leads the triumph of love. So you see here there's a diagram where the magician oversees the marriage of the next, well, the marriage and the birth of the next five trump cards. So it's such a magician, empress, emperor, high priestess, high priest, or hierophant. It ends with the lovers. Uh, I didn't know that. So that's pretty cool that uh, he's the start of that uh, chain of events. All elements are united in Hermes. His connection with the fool is shown by his many associations with air. Hermes was originally a wind god. He travels through the air and corresponds to Thoth, who makes souls breathe. In its most basic sense, Spiritus is moving air. He is also connected with the element earth, since he represents the Spiritus Mundi, spirit of the earth. The interpretation of in the inter penetration of spirit and matter. Most importantly, he is the fiery water and the watery fire. The cock that accompanies the herald is taken to be a symbol of vigilance, since it heralds the, com the coming of dawn. Likewise, Hermes is the god who puts people to sleep and wakes them at dawn, and so he is called the light bringer, as is the cock. Hermes brings both obscurity and illumination, dreams and clarity. Finally, we must not forget that the cock is a sexual symbol, hence the slang, due to his aggressiveness and eagerness to mate. In alchemy, the cock and hen represent the empirical personalities that must embody the sacred marriage of the god and goddesses, or king and queen. Hermes' erection recalls his most common representation, the ithyphallic herms that stood outside almost every Athenian home. Mercury is the Spiritus Vegetavius, a nature deity who is closely associated and sometimes identical with Venus. As the light bringer and morning star, Mercury is not himself the light, but heralds the dawning of self-knowledge. Alchemically, he brings the sunlight to earth, the Mercury joining the sulfur to the salt. His alter ego, Venus, is also called Stella Matu Matutina and Lucifer. As evening stars, with the assistance of Cupid, their son by some accounts, they herald the descent back into the cognito vespertina, the world of sense and natural consciousness. So the cycle continues. The magician, dressed in red, is the natural enemy of the idiot, who will dress in white at the end of the Saturnalia. It is well, it is well known alchemical symbolism. For example, in his lexicon of alchemy, says of Mercury that when he conquers, he is white. When overcome, he is red. Thus the magician has triumphed and his purification is complete. He will throw off his red cloak and show himself in the white robe of innocence and purity. Similarly, Case explains that the red cloak represents desire, passion, and activity, which the magician can take up or put aside at will. His white robe represents the light of perfect wisdom, which always underlies his actions. The magician corresponds to Saturn, Kronos, as well as Hermes, for the two are closely related. Sometimes Saturn is Mercuri Mer 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 Mercurius Senex, and other times Mercurius Evenus, Saturn's son. Like Mercury, Saturn may be a hermaphrodite and a unification of opposites. In alchemy, both Mercury and Saturn may be the red and green lions, and they both represent the prima materia, both of the mediator, who is responsible for transforming evil into good. The Saturnalia, like Carnival, lasts seven days, December 17th to 23rd, each ruled by a planet. The last day, Saturn's day, is ruled by Saturn, Saturnus Lucifer, who heralds the coming of light, coming light of self-knowledge. Further evidence of the correspondence of the magician and Saturn is that the fool corresponds to the primordial chaos, and the Lord and the Lady of Chance. 
the magician and fortune, correspond to the first divine couple, Saturn and Rhea, who ruled in the Golden Age. They are the Yang and the Yin that come from the Tao and beget the gods of the first Agdoad, the personal triumphs, corresponding to the eight trigrams. Conversely, the second Agdoad, the universal triumphs, progresses into a new golden age, ruled again by Kronos and Rhea, but now in their roles as Lord and Lady of Necessity, Trump 11 time and 16 the star. They reunite into the hermaphrodite cosmos, that is, the Yang and Yin reunite in the Tao. This will be explained more fully when these cards are discussed. The Homeric Hymn to Hermes, Apollo gives Hermes, the intermediary between the gods and the mortals, the arts of pebble divination taught by three virgin bee goddesses. Apollo says, I tell thee, son of splendid Maya and of Zeus, the Aegis bearer, lucky daemon of the gods, I give thee henceforth these, inquire of them with care, they'll please thy heart, if them thou give to mortal man. He'll often hear thine holy voice, if luck be his. So there you have it. Um, I learned a lot personally. I didn't know the magician and the fool were so closely related. And I also found it fascinating that the magician oversees the coupling of the next uh, five uh, tarot trump cards. And he is related to Hermes, while the fool was related to Dionysus. So I hope you guys learned a lot today, and I will see you tomorrow where we will read the chapter on the Empress. So thanks for joining, and I'll see you then.